Welcome back listeners for another edition of uh, Heads Up. Uh, last week we had my dear younger brother, he's a bit bigger than me, but um, putting in the, uh, some time to replace the money shot who was tied up on business. So uh, good to have you back money shot and did you enjoy your la- uh, last Saturday at the races at Tirapa? Flying sardine got us off to a flying start, but it was all downhill from there. But um, almost came back with the first four in the very last event at um, Morfordville. But uh, no, nah, wasn't to be. But the guys who won um, did pretty well. Some smart betting on a couple of hot favourites. Yeah, I think they started 500 to win Prom Queen and then that one. And I think yeah. they had 1,000 to win a Drossen, so they're up to 1,800. And then just a few astute bets from there and they finished with about 4,300 so yeah. plus another 5,000 so a good day out for them that's for yeah. sure. It was an excellent format too just to be able to bet on whatever you like as long as you've turned over uh, $500 by was it 4pm? Uh, 5pm 5, 5, 5, I think 5, it was. 5pm and then we were still betting until oh, well, about 10 to 6 weren't we in, in Australia and there's some really good uh, punts almost pulled off and pulled off so uh, excellent atmosphere, and that's what racing's all about, eh? It's just amongst a bunch of other punters having a good time and trying to back a winner and make a few dollars and having good fun doing it. And, uh, yeah, the next, the, next, the next punters competition in the, in the circuit uh, is the uh, Racing Towers Informant Punter of the Year, the Informant Sponsoring, uh, on Kiwi Fruit Cup Day, June the 24th. So uh, hopefully we'll see a good crowd along there too. That's a slightly different format to uh, last year, but uh, all the details are on the website. I'll yeah. give it a plug now, Neil, so uh, good. have a look. If, if you're keen to come along, it'll be a good day out, that's for sure. Yeah, I know the, the guys won it last year. Um, won I'll it be back for sure, you think. Right on Mitch and Corey. With all their ginger nuts money. <laughs> that's right, yeah. They'll be buying in and buying back. No, it's um, good to see them there again too. And, and last week, um, I had an email asking me why I didn't tip out, uh, why I tipped out not a, not usual trip, strange name, um, to beat Androssum instead of throwing out a horse like Flying Sardine. Well, I, I just it was just from a, a value point of view. I thought I'd dross him, I put him on top, but at dollar sixty, I thought he was too short. And not usual trip, I thought was had they done the, done the um, times and sectionals to maybe beat him. If things went wrong with that and I, I got it wrong, but um, when when did you receive this email? Prior to the races or after? No, it was after the races. <laughs> I, and was it signed by a guy called Harry Hindsight? No, <laughs> more than likely no. No, it was a young fellow. I don't know the chat, but it was a fair question. But I thought, well, I can't. I was, I was tossed out between that and Flying Sardine. I thought, you've got paying subscribers, so Flying Sardine. I thought it was a really well placed to win. Oh, is this your radio tip? Is it? Yeah, that's ready. Um, well, that's the, you got to pay for the good oil. That's right. You can't give everything away for free these days. Yeah. And um, the jump outs have had a, a lot of feedback through Twitter and email about the jump outs. Cut a long story short, I've actually been ringing around the clubs, Levin, New Plymouth, and Hawke's Bay, and the, it's a, a positive feedback about trying to get the replays up somewhere on YouTube or even Facebook pages. Um, so punters. And uh, form analysts like myself, we spend a lot of time studying the form, just get frustrated when you can't see a, a jump out. Uh, yesterday at Hastings, we had one that won and paid six or eighteen dollars. Uh, Moscow Mistress, I think it was called, won at uh, Wanganui last Sunday, got second in a jump out, and knocked us out of the the quarter. If you'd seen the jump out, you may have put it in. You don't know, but. Um, it, it does affect turnover when people just can't be bothered having a bet when you can't find the jump out form 
there's no for, nothing in the form lines that said it had to jump out. You've got to do the cross-referencing and keep a database of all the runners. But uh, it's an ongoing um, escapade, and I think hopefully we get it sorted out and get some replays up on somewhere. Okay, a um, couple of weeks ago you got back in form money shot with those two winners, with the Titans and Knights, and the, the Sunwolves easily covered that 34.5 points. Gee, they've, they've been the pundit's friend this year, they? Yeah. I think they had a 29 point head start against the Jaguars, or the Huguare, should I say, and they were never in doubt covering that, uh, almost won the game. Yep. And I know they did. one particular punter, that was a finish to a $30,000 multi, and he was uh, he was enjoying his Sunday morning <laughs> bacon and eggs watching that, because that was never in doubt. Yeah. And they're a team that certainly play with a lot of heart, the Sun Wolves, so... Um, yeah, there's a couple of lines here uh, again this week which we'll touch on later on where Bookie's still underestimating a couple of teams and giving them decent uh, point starts so uh, hopefully we can find a couple of those for the sports punters and get back get back on that winning roll yeah, that's a good feeling and um, we're just trying a new format with the heads up we're making it free access and just previewing still the two main races for Saturday, which will be at Taranaki uh, this this weekend, and um, one of the money shots sports selections, and still previewing other things as well and talking about other things. So uh, we'll see how it goes, and any feedback is certainly welcome. So uh, back with part two in a moment uh, with a preview of the two main races at Taranaki. main gallops meeting in the country tomorrow with the abandonment of Rotorua possibly going to be rescheduled for next Sunday but all eyes are focused on New Plymouth uh, in the Taranaki Thoroughbred Racing's meeting the Kiwi Butcher Open Handicap 1200 metre race Neil race 6 one of the feature races on the day pretty even field bookies got close up to favourite at 320 I think you like one outside of him. Yeah, I'd actually gone for originally Zerali in this race, but after looking at that speed map closer, I just think passing shot's going to get the lead here. Nothing's going to take it on. Nothing's got the speed to take it on. And I think um, even though ideally he would want a dead track or better, um, the way he's racing, he's just racing so well, and that was a good second at Hawke's Bay on a slow track. I think Lisa could hit the lead, and if that inside rail is a place to be, um, by this time of day, I might even back it as well, but I won't back it until uh, later in the day, but I'm pretty keen on passing shot. How about yourself? No. No, no I, I wouldn't be, I'd be surprised if they actually ran him, because he was in to run at New Plymouth on the Cup Day meeting in February. What was the track that day? About a slow seven, and they scratched, because yeah. it's track conditions, so... If they do run, I guess he's a chance, but no, I like Sorali. I think you, you, you might have jumped off the wrong wrong one here, Neil, but 880 currently, but of course if they're scratching, there'll be deductions. Mm. Has a good fresh up record, certainly uh, loves the mud, 12 starts for four wins and five placings, yep. and how often do you see horses... They were fresh up, but they have a trial on the week of their race, uh, like he has down at Waverley, yep. and then they come out and win. So just all those factors. Kate Cowan riding pretty well, gets the three kilo claim. And so Zerali, bit of value, I thought, in that race, OK. Might not have the class of some of those, but it's definitely gone some big races and some pretty good fields last campaign. Yep, yep. No, no, I'm happy to go with the top official with you too on that race, if you like. That's, a, That's fine, yeah. but you have to pay up even if passing shot is scratched, though. <laughs> um, let me think about it. No, it gets <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, God, it was a nice trial, eh? It, um, it stretched out nicely, handles the ground all right. And you Kate Cowan, she's riding really well. Three kgs, yep. And, uh, uh, what about the next race, the 1800 Open Handicap, sponsored by Energy City Ford, race seven? Uh, again, Prince of Passion, surprise favourite for mine, $3.30. Are you going with him or you got something else up your sleeve? Oh, I, I, if the track was decent, you'd go for him, but at 3.30 on a heavy living track, you just couldn't bag it at that price. But I, I went through it, and this is probably harder than that previous race. The um, Katie McKean I've gone for, she hasn't won fresh up, but she maps to go forward and sit outside, um, say, over the river, and Bella's the lot will go forward and... 
just the way she handles the track there. She, her last two runs, she's won on heavy tracks by seven lengths and one length or something. But um, Chucky Race, same one. What do you like her riding? So um, Katie McKean for me, each way chance. You? Mm, no, I wouldn't be having a bet in that race, if, to be brutally honest. But uh, Get off the fence, come it, it's one of these races you almost think it could be Blathwaite. He's, he's not a bad uh, winter galloper or even Duffer's Creek. One of those two, maybe. But, yeah, yeah hard, hard, hard race to pick, yeah. really. Yes, you've got to see how the pattern is working on the day and if leaders are seated and the rail's the place to be. But I'd say it's probably more likely to be sweepers down the outside. It's raining now, so it'll be loose. So you're probably wanting to be getting to the outside, I would have thought. So yeah. that would suit a horse like Blathwaite or Duffers Creek for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, a bit disappointing though with no Rotorua. So um, yeah. slim pickings, but there is still good racing in Australia and Doom. And a couple of Kiwis uh, hopping across the Tasman to try and pick up some Australian money. And I guess the main feature... The Group 1, Wake for Age, Doombin 10,000. That's meeting code 14, Doombin Race 7. Start wondering, one of our favourites, Neil. Yeah. I see he's paying $12. He's coming too, I see. It was 14 or $15 earlier in the week. So, And the track's going to be reasonably good. Like It'll be like our Dead 5, Dead 6 probably, which will suit Start Wondering ideally. And Jonathan Park's gone over. Uh, it's a pretty good feel. Music Magnate's a good horse. Obviously, in Japanese, we won a trial really well. Fell swoops a good horse, but drawn wide. But no, we know how good Start Wandering is. And uh, even at weight for age, he's um, got to be good each one, and he doesn't really. Twelve, what, what is he, 12 and 380 now? You'd probably yeah. back him on the tape when you with the came in good pool. You'd probably get more on the tape. Yeah, good point. Yep. No, he's got to be a good chance. He won't mind that, that track. Russian Revolution goes a bit too crazy for me, but 3.20 is too short I felt, but no, no well, we know how good he is, so and he's, you know, one in Sydney, so we know he's a good horse, so yep, each way, each way with him um, and oh, further, early on in the day we've got, um, the race 6 and I saw that this field, yeah um, race 6, number 7 Chaconte, it's a great run at, uh, in the Easter Look, really, a um, run that says I want more ground, and um, I see he's into four dollars sixty now. And look, Tessa stock fifteen dollars. He's a bit of horse in Tessa stock, you'd think, but carrying equal weights to Tessa stock, <laughs> she seems pretty yeah. poorly weighted, really, when you look at that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, no, it's a good race in there tomorrow. I'll be looking forward to analysing those races actually for future meetings there. Okay, so um, I've put up a preview of some. Well, I'll, by this time, by the time this heads up goes up on the on YouTube, um, I will have had a, a full preview of all Taranaki races. So subscribers can log on there, and um, back with part three with our um, with Money Shot Sports selections. Okay, back with the sports section, and uh, the Money Shot has sorted out uh, one good bit uh, for Saturday night for listeners and uh, the subscribers. The other selection, which the Money Shot is really keen on. Um, will be up on the website this evening. So what's it going to be for listeners? Uh, well, we could have tipped in the Crusaders and the Hurricanes Super Rugby Blockbuster game on Saturday night, Neil, but yeah. gee, that's a pretty tough game. Both teams in pretty good form. Uh, Crusaders on a winning roll. Hurricanes, OK, probably not playing quite so well over the last couple of weeks, but certainly have uh, all the ability in the world and all the talent. So we'll leave that one alone for now. But we'll throw one out there that will warm the cockles of your heart, Neil. Because I know, I know you claim to be a Warriors fan, but I think deep down you actually quite like seeing them lose. So <laughs> I'm not sure. We're going to pick. I'm not sure. We're going to pick <laughs> Penrith to beat the Warriors, cover the two and a half point start. We've been spooking the Panthers for a long time. This is their final chance yeah. to uh, deliver for us at home off a bye. And they had a lot of players play in the um, rep games over the weekend. They, I think the club realised they need their players playing as much as possible. Um, yeah, sure, a lot of Warriors played in that Kiwis team, but that probably didn't do them a lot of good in terms of their confidence levels. And to me, the big jigsaw piece in this game is the missing the 
Warriors missing Simon Mannering in their team list. He's, he's not playing. He's the glue in their side, and he's the one that does the real hard yards and, the, and always tops the tackle count. So without him, I think they might struggle, and Penrith desperate to get a home win to cover the two-and-a-half-point start. I think the game kicks off 5 o'clock Saturday afternoon. Yep, that sounds good. And just a, just a question, do you ever sort of follow, um, have a bet during the game? Any, any advice on uh, for listeners to, maybe if they're watching a game like the Warriors game, and whether points start or head-to-head, any options worth looking at? Or well, they, they yeah, generally, what you find is, I mean, it doesn't always happen, obviously, but often um, teams... Team, the half-time point start is, is normally they open it up and you've got plenty of time to have a bet at half-time. Yeah. But you take that Blues-Waratahs game and, and I think the Blues lead was at 26 nil at half-time and the point start was 29 and a half. Yeah. Generally when teams come teams coming out after a half-time in court where they've been shellacked in the first half will normally bounce back a little bit yeah. and as it happened in that game the Waratahs came right back home lose by seven I think it was so so sometimes when when there's when there's quite a lopsided first half it can even itself up a little bit in the second so if you can see where the point start maybe uh, doesn't necessarily reflect that that might be something one one little tidbit to consider from time to time yeah no good advice actually yeah logical too which I like so um, now I'll know a few weeks ago we talked about the Lions tour and that 3-0 result I see has come down from uh, we had a a dollar ninety-five. It's into a dollar eighty-five. So maybe people want a multi um, that Penrith result into to that yeah. bit at yeah. the stage. Yeah. Some interest. Yeah. Yep. No, it's not far away now, is it? The Lions to it. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Hopefully, this rain comes and gets dumped well before then, because it's going to be a real mess, messy fields uh, if they play this sort of crap. But um, anyway, looking forward to that. All right. I've still got my jersey from the two thousand and five tour of the Lions. Does it still fit you though, Neil? Oh, it does, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> easily, easily. <laughs> that's, that's good to hear. Yeah. Good to hear. So, no, it'll be a, if the weather continues the way it is, especially up here in the north, it'll be a um, on the couch sort of weekend. So, there's yeah. plenty of sport to enjoy, uh, plenty of league, plenty of rugby, plenty of golf. Uh, so, yeah. yep. Yeah, it's that forward. kind of weekend, isn't it? Yeah, that golf with the uh, Players' Championship. And thanks to Mark last week, is I actually had a bet on that um, Australian le- uh, soccer final. And it went down to the shootout, and they got done on the shootout. Got them at $3, but uh, they don't pay out on seconds in the shootout. You could have, you could have covered when they went 1-0 up. You could, have, you could have traded your way out no, of that position. You, I, I see um, one of the Australian... TABs, I think there was a long range multi yeah. with about 120,000 finishing on Sydney just to win the title, which obviously included the penalty shootout. You'd be you'd be watching that penalty shootout with a lot of and, mm-hmm. and trepidation when you've got 120k riding on the result of a penalty shootout, that's for sure. Yeah, but like someone we know recently who was riding Winks in the last the last win to win a yeah, that's, penalty. That was a bit of an easier uh, watch but yeah, yeah. no yeah. Uh, Good it, it wasn't a bad game of soccer actually then I watched most of it for, it was. I don't, we don't watch a lot of soccer but that wasn't too bad yeah, it was pretty brutal in the end it was good good game ok and uh, back with uh, part 4 with our brick bats and bouquets our, and our multi question for the week ok back with part 4 and your chance to win a $20 multi and We'll touch on it in a second, but uh, first of all, money shot. You've got a, a self-inflicted brick bat. Brick bat for this week, Neil. No doubt about it. Yeah. Goes to myself. <laughs> or oh, how long will it be? Maybe eight, ten weeks ago. I gave a brick bat to the trainers of Nashville, saying they should retire him. He's finished. Doesn't want to race anymore. And since then, he's come out and won two races. So uh, and I'm the one with egg on my face, and another one's who know better. But yep. The old saying, you should never bag a horse till he's dead, and even then you should wait six years. <laughs> so, uh, so, no, well done to the connections of Nashville. And I think, to be fair, the 
rating of Cape Cowan certainly suits that horse and just sit quietly and come with one last run. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, they've got the chocolates a couple of times. Yeah, no, it's great. And she sits perfectly quiet on a horse. And that one at uh, Waterlee at Blenheim was terrific. Just even, even with 300 metres to go, you wouldn't think it would win. But the others just stopped from going too fast up front and bang, through they came. That was good to see, well weighted. And, uh, uh, and um, no, it's good. And um, no bouquets? Uh, I guess uh, you could say the cancellation of Rotorua giving everyone plenty of warning and yeah. time yeah. rather than doing it on the morning. Um, yeah, it's, the more notice everyone has, the better, really. So yeah. um, well done, I guess, for making that decision now rather than waiting till race morning sort of thing or even trying to run one race and then... Um, calling it off, so a bouquet of some token, I guess, there. Yeah, and um, Waipa postponed on Monday, and a certain BT Junior's hopefully going to be starting there. He's going to be a decent chance, isn't he? Well, if he can't win that, if he can't win that, he might get the Nashville treatment. It should be sacked. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, should be hard, he should be hard to beat, you'd like to think, in that field. Yeah, yeah. Long as it's not a real bog, but the weather forecast looks pretty good, so it should be reasonable, yeah. Um, right, I'll give a bouquet out to um, a journalist for the Otago Daily Times, Johnny Turner. He actually rang up during the week and wanted to do a little story about how I analyse winter racing, but I didn't know he existed for, for the Otago Daily Times, so I'll put a link up on the website as well. And he's got lots of uh, really good racing stories there, so it's something punters, it's free to view as well, so people can log on there and have a look at some good stories. Um, a bit about a miner's, oh, I suppose we could, yeah, two things actually, off course substitutes at Ashburton the other day, it was about three three horses, sort of around the 5.50 mark, and for quaddy punters and treble punters, they were trying to work out which horse was going to be the off course sub, there's got to be a way of working out uh, so people know what the off course sub is before the race starts, but... Uh, there's a few problems there, aren't there, money shot? About, um, well, yeah, I mean, the suggestion is, is to clear the, the substitute for your quaddies, your trebles, etc., three minutes out from the race so everyone knows and then they can make you know, decisions in theory to um, yeah, account for that. Yeah. The problem with that is, is the horse could be scrapped 20 seconds before they jump at the barrier um, and then... You, know, yeah. you don't have time to give an off course sub right. or a substitute. I don't. I think the word off course sub is redundant these days because at the end of the day, it's just a, a, a substitute uh, for like for scratching. So uh, yeah, I don't. I don't uh, if any listeners can think of a, a better way to do it, but I can't see a better way because of the you don't know when a horse is going to be late scratched. Yeah. It could be an hour before the race, it could be 20 minutes, it could be 20 seconds. Yeah. Maybe if it was named three minutes before the official race time, and if it... Yeah, and that's, and, that's, and that's the horse that gets scratched at the barrier. If, if it gets scratched, well, it goes on to the old rule, you're the, the closing favourite, so... But not layers sure. of complication, Neil. Layers right. of complication. <laughs> probably right. There's got to be, yeah. be a good way of getting this sorted out, because it's not good. And... Um, because the actual final prices don't go, go up until halfway through the race when the evening's balanced up. And the other Correct. the other problem is if they close at the same price, say both at five point zero zero, I've asked Michael to all this question, and it actually goes on to the horse that is paying the lowest decimal price, which can be seen on the, the raw price. Yeah, yeah, the, the raw price. price. Yeah. Which might be five point oh one, and the other one might be paying five point oh eight. But of course, they're both rounded down. Don't get me started on the TAB's rounding policy deal. Now that's something yeah. that, that we could have a crack at. How much extra millions of dollars do they cream from their rounding policy? Yeah, yeah. yeah but we won't, we won't, we won't touch on that subject for now. Yeah, good. You got, and what was the other? Oh, the um, saddle cloths. I was doing the sectionals at Ashburton on uh, was it Wednesday or Thursday, and. Um, even close up, close up camera, you can hardly make out the saddle cloth numbers. You know? Six looked like a, a five, or a three looked like an eight. So, um, Taranon is probably the best in the country for the size of saddle cloth. The numbers there are big and bold, white against black, easy to see. So, people who don't know the colours, if they can see their number during the race, it just makes it so much easier. So, can't be 
too hard a problem to sort out, you think? Edmonton's got new saddle cloths, I noticed, too, which yeah. don't look very clear to my eye. Yeah. Yeah, they've, they've been doing sectionals there and trying out different saddle cloth combinations. They had, I think they had blue against black one night. God, the worst combination you could ever have. You could hardly see the numbers, but um, yeah, it's something they'll, they'll try and sort out, I'm sure. Uh, okay, now, last week we had um, Robert L, who was an 0900 number guy, straight the multi. You got a bit winner, of... winner, chicken dinner, <laughs> finally. Yeah, he was right. Just a two leg multi, was it? Just a two leg? No, he was happy with that. Just mm, four punch. That, might be the, that might be a clue. People are too greedy. Yeah, well, Taking too many legs in a multi. Yeah, well, I'm normally a two leg multi person. They're very occasional, I'll take three legs or even four legs, but uh, I'll stick to two legs. I've learnt my lesson, so. Um, Anyway, this week's question. I'm not this week's to, question. It's a good question. So this this meeting uh, at Taranaki, over the last few years, there's been two horses that have won at this meeting at their second start in their career that have both gone on to win Group 1 races in Australia. And we'll give a little clue. The two horses in question are both trained by the same training combination so we want to know the name of the two horses that have raced at this meeting recently that have gone on to win group ones in australia yep and if you know the answer email it to me on formpro at formpro.co.nz or text on 027 352 6402 do it by 10 p.m tonight and if there's more than one which the band will be uh, my wife will draw out uh, the lucky person, and they'll have that $20 multi-bet. Uh, whatever they want tomorrow, it could be Australian races or a combination of Taranaki, whatever they like, or the sport, sports bets. So um, look forward to that. And anything else before we sign off? Um, Not from me, Neil. Not from me. It's just with the way the weather is, it's going to be a cold, wintry weekend. So light the fire, put the heater on, and just enjoy all the sport and racing. Yeah, too right. And um, I might even go out to Waipa on Monday. And I've never been to Waipa before. I'm looking forward to going to the races there on Monday. If it's a decent sort of day. And, um, you, you've been there before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's, 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 uh, what should we say about Waipa? It can be very cold. <laughs> the stands faces the wrong way, in my opinion. Yeah. And But hey... If the horse wins there, you won't remember that, will you? So, right, yeah. Uh, uh, I, might, I might tag along, you never know. Yeah. So, uh, yep, we'll, we'll talk back on our, our trip to Waipa if we end up going over the hill. Too right, OK. Rightio, thanks everyone for joining in, and uh, hopefully you can get under that uh, multi-question and win yourself a decent multi. Cheers, have a good weekend. Very good.